<clears throat> now what I want to do is get into bait color. And we're not going to get into bait color about, you know, for bass or this or that. We're going to get into it on making the selection. What's the most visible color in the water column, guys? Half of you are right, half of you are wrong. As we go down through the water column, like so, how many of you here fishing up for lake trout? I'm using a green squid, hoochie. I'm using a seahawk colored hoochie. As you go down to the water column, and I'm not going to get exact on it because it's a whole, there's a whole book on this. What fish see it's called, read it. As you go down, remember I talked to you about that red line? Cajun red, bad Cajun red. What happens at 50 feet, red, and it all depends on water clarity, if it's stained, if it's muddy. Red in perfect conditions is visible to 50 feet. They can see it. The red thing with the line is them preying off of you because of all the bleeding bait stuff. Red hooks, red this, red that. Might as well make red line. If you really look at what's being used and where that was developed, it was developed in the ocean, deep sea fishing. As it drops, it becomes a rust colored, and then it just, be turns, it just turns black. <coughs> Which, okay, fine. It's going to blend in because there's not as much light down there. Yellow goes away the next. Which yellow is, I think it's around 80 feet, somewhere like that. Guys, don't quote me. Yellow goes to white, and then it just goes away to black. If you get down to the colors of importance, at about a buck eighty, green goes away. Green goes away. Two of twenty and past, blue's visible. If you know of any divers, talk to them. Everything's blue. Why is it blue? Well, anything that's blue down there is going to show up. That's why deep fishing is always done with greens and blues. Now, somebody said green was the deepest. You were close. What does yellow and blue make? It's green, like a Ziploc commercial, right? It has some blue in it. Why, when we bass fish, are we always going after baits that jigs, lizards? Oh, my best color is black and blue. Well, blue. Black is a shade of blue. Purple is a shade of blue. That's why those colors are so well, because they can see them. Now, now that you know how that breaks down, and like I said, guys, there's a whole book on it, and we could go on and on and on about it. You know, your, your fluorescent colors, your chartreuses, they're going to pick up more light. So they're going to be a little deeper. That's why you have those. Glow colors. Glows can go down a long ways because a glow looks what? Green. Creatures that are down in the deep, they appear to be phosphorescent, glow colored. The downside of glow is that glow a lot of times is driven by temperature. You charge up a bait and you fish it shallow where it's warmer, it's going to glow longer. You set it down where it gets cold, it's not going to glow as long. There's a little deception there with the glow. Now clear water versus muddy water, how do I select the bait? Now we always want to go out and we want to select a bait that matches the forage that, we're, the, the forage that they're eating, be it a perch colored bait or whatnot. What you have to do is understand what's going to show up the best. Let's take clear water for an example. In clear water with bright skies, got some good light coming, we like to throw <coughs> chrome baits because they throw off light because there's light to throw off. It's going to catch their eye. If we have bright skies and no chop, glassy flat, which is really a high pressure situation, we're going to throw see-through baits with a little bit of color. Because you can actually run the fish off by zipping too much light out there. 
Everybody just picks a bait and hucks it. If I've got cloudy skies and I've got no light and I've got muddy water, I wanted a painted surface bait. Painted surface. See how that's painted? What this does is it picks up what available ultraviolet light there is penetrating the water and throws it off. You throw one of these out in the water on a cloudy day and reel it down, it'll appear to have a glow coming off of it. Put your polarized glasses on and look. It's throwing off a glow. When it comes to blades, same thing, we're going to, you know, when we get to the walleye thing and all that. But spinner baits, anything that's got a blade on it. People just grab one and they throw it, not really understanding why. If I have muddy or stained water, I need a blade that's going to throw off light. Now notice I said stained, not muddy, just stained. We'll go with just stained. See this right here? Brass and gold in stained water will throw off more light than silver will. Now the, the blade color, or the skirt color and blade type, if I have just straight good conditions, I'll run maybe a straight white or more natural body. If I got that stained water, I'm looking for one of the gold blades and I put what on there? See that green? Why? Because green shows up best, right? One of the best. Now, if I'm fishing muddy, muddy water, muddy water, just like my baits down here, I want painted blades. What are these two colors on this spinnerbait? Most visible, right? Low light conditions, dirty water. It's cloudy, it's overcast. Not good light, that color right there. Now you notice these all have willow blades on them. We run willow blades quite a bit because they give off a lot of flash, but they don't give off necessarily the best vibration. If we were gonna go out night fishing, I'd pick you up and I'd tie one of these on. Unless we had a lot of moon. If it's a dark moon night, new moon, meaning it's starting back through the process again, this is what we'd tie on. If we had a little bit of moonlight, I don't have one here, guys, but if we had a little bit of moonlight, I'd tie on one of those, but it would have Colorado blades on it. Because what, there's, there's moonlight, so that green, or even the painted, is gonna be visible. But typically the winner, whoops, typically the winner is this guy right here. Now you say black, how can you see black? When bats are buzzing around, you can see them, right? When you look up against even a dark sky, you can see them. Black is a shade of what? Blue? So now it's creating a silhouette up above, silhouette. The other benefit that I have is that big Colorado blade. That throws out a pile of thump. Now this bait here, if you went out and the fish were aggressive and they were hitting it, and it started to slow down, they weren't as aggressive. I'd go to one of these, but it'd have a willow leaf on it. The reason being is, you can drive a fish away with noise. You can drive them off. What happens, all these baits have got rattles. Remember I said, when it slows down, it's bright skies, no wind, go to these translucent baits. What you may have to do is go to a balsa wood bait. Crankbait still, but no rattles. It's like finesse fishing, but with a crankbait. Jigs that have rattles in them, I've seen fish drive them off. Like you're flipping for bass, and they got the rattle packs on them, and you're shaking it. In that clear water in spring, you don't necessarily need rattles. If you're not getting bites, take the rattles off because they're actually odds are it's scaring the fish off. They want it subtle. 
You can finesse fish any technique. If you're Texas rigging and you throw on a, a brass and glass setup, very noisy, clacks together, and you're not getting any bites, I'm betting you, you could take that brass and glass off, throw a straight lead on with no bead and catch fish, because it's subtle. To become good at fishing, I don't care what you're fishing for, if you're trolling flasher setup, if you're trolling you know, a, a herring in a, in a, in a um, flasher uh, for Chinook, you can still finesse it. You can go smaller, you can go longer leader, you can finesse everything. And a lot of people overlook color and noise. This bait worked great last week. Well, the conditions have changed. The water's changed. The barometric pressure's different. Maybe the other's still on a crankbait bite. But now I gotta go with a translucent color and I gotta go with something with no rattles. Another trick, you hear about the hot colors. In natural lakes, which all our lakes around here are natural, and they're clear. Your best colors traditionally are natural. One of the best colors that there is out there is green pumpkin. If you saw the drop shot and show we did with Chad, we're using green pumpkin worms catching the smallies. When you drop that thing down, and you drop the underwater camera down, that green pumpkin looks the same color as the bottom. Well, what does that mean? Well, what happens, guys, and I heard it a long time ago, I don't remember if I read it or I saw it in the fishing show, but he was talking about fishing a bait that's the same color as the bottom or as the weeds around. And what it does is it blends into the environment and it doesn't allow them to analyze. If you take a crankbait that's green and it matches the vegetation or these translucent ones, as you crank it by, they don't have time to go, what is that? Because it's not really standing out. They just bang, smack it. Because they can't really tell what it is. It blends into the environment. And a lot of times that part of the finesse fishing is huge. It's very important. But if you threw, gross you out of here again. <laughs> If you threw this guy into deeper water or you threw it into muddy water, odds are you're not going to get any bites. Because it's blending in so well, if you don't have a bead or something on there, they don't even really know it's there. You got to draw attention to it. So then you go into the hot color baits. That's the hot color baits. How many baits do you see in the soft market world that have a green tail? Green is highly visible. Once again, the hot tail like that, if you threw it in clear water, can drive them off. It can. So you got to be very careful when you're, when you're pulling your baits out. If you hop into our boat and everybody laughs, Chad laughs, these guys all laugh, my dash has probably got $3,000 of tackle on it. Because all day long, I'm just going and going and going. Because I got to make a show. What do these guys want? And that's what makes us successful at what we do. They're there. You use the right thing to find them, the graph. You're in the right situation, the spots we talked about. They're there. It's just a matter of giving them what they want now. You know, an example to you, we went out and we did a bass show called Bass on Grubs. And all it was was a 3 16 ounce lead head ball jig and a four inch Berkeley power grub in a pumpkin pattern. We fished all day. All day, springtime, these things should be going. Water's 45, perfect. I got frustrated, said enough. Went back to what I used to do when I was a kid. Little tiny four inch, no rattles. Paddle tail, or a, you know, curl tail. Lightest weight jig head I could throw because the wind was blowing. And it would subtle helicopter fall down. We filmed the show in about two and a half hours. All three and a half to five pound largemouth because it's persistent. They're here. Timing is right. They're here. What is it going to take? So you have to keep in mind your surroundings. That's that barometric pressure thing. What is it doing? A fish is most susceptible to attack or what have you by what's happening up above. 
They're always looking up. How many times have you been out fishing and an osprey flies over a weed bed and it goes, Aah! perch, pumpkin seed, bluegill, they just freak because they're looking up. You don't see that on a windy day. When you got chop on the water, it takes the light rays, filters them, breaks them up, and they move around.